Welcome to our time machine, where we're about to embark on a thrilling journey through the corridors of history. The United Nations, often abbreviated as the UN, stands as one of the most significant achievements in modern history. It was born in the tumultuous aftermath of World War II, a time when the world yearned for lasting peace and a collective effort to prevent further global conflicts. This historical account delves into the creation of the United Nations, from the early discussions and the momentous San Francisco Conference to its evolution and impact on the world stage. In this narrative, we will explore the chapters of this remarkable journey, detailing the key figures, challenges, and milestones that have shaped the UN into the global institution it is today. The Need for a New Global Order in the tumultuous aftermath of World War II, a world scarred by the horrors of two devastating global conflicts found itself at a critical crossroads. The League of Nations, which had been established in the wake of World War I, with the noble goal of preventing further catastrophic wars, had proven tragically ineffective. Its inability to halt the slide into World War II underscored the urgent need for a new and more robust international organization one capable of maintaining global peace and fostering cooperation among nations. The scars of war were still fresh, and the collective memory of the immense human suffering and destruction wrought by both world wars hung heavily in the air. It was abundantly clear that the existing mechanisms for international cooperation were insufficient to prevent the recurrence of such calamities. The League's shortcomings had been brutally exposed, and the world was determined not to repeat the mistakes of the past. Amidst this backdrop of devastation and a deep yearning for lasting peace, the idea of a new global order began to take root. Leaders and thinkers from around the world recognized that the challenges facing humanity could no longer be tackled by individual nations acting in isolation. The interconnectedness of modern life, along with the awesome destructive power of modern weaponry, demanded a rethinking of how nations interacted on the world stage. The need for an organization that could serve as a forum for diplomacy, conflict resolution, and collective action was paramount. It had to be an institution capable of promoting not just the absence of war, but also the positive values of cooperation, collaboration, and the pursuit of common goals. It was against this backdrop that the vision of the United Nations began to crystallize. World leaders, scholars, and diplomats understood that the task at hand was immense and complex. The new organization would need to address a wide array of issues, from preventing conflicts and mediating disputes to fostering economic development and safeguarding human rights. It had to be flexible enough to adapt to the changing dynamics of the international landscape while upholding the principles of justice and equality among nations. The end of World War II did not simply mark the conclusion of a global conflict. It represented a pivotal moment in human history. It was a moment when the collective will of nations coalesced around the idea that, in the face of unprecedented challenges, they could and must work together to forge a more peaceful and prosperous world. The failures of the past served as a stark reminder of the consequences of division and isolationism and the need for a new global order was undeniable. As diplomats and statesmen began to lay the groundwork for the United Nations, they did so with a profound sense of responsibility and a commitment to learning from the mistakes of the past. They understood that the road ahead would be fraught with challenges, but they also believed that by coming together in the spirit of cooperation, humanity could chart a course toward a brighter and more secure future. The Atlantic Charter and the Early Vision The genesis of the United Nations, that monumental institution of international cooperation, can be traced back to a critical juncture in the midst of World War II, when the world was embroiled in a brutal conflict. It was in 1941 that two key figures, President Franklin D. Roosevelt of the United States and Prime Minister Winston Churchill of the United Kingdom, embarked on a historic meeting to not only strategize for the war, but also to lay the foundations for a post-war world order that would prioritize peace, justice, and collaboration among nations. The backdrop to this pivotal encounter was one of immense global turmoil. World War II 
was raging on multiple fronts, claiming countless lives and devastating entire nations. The horrors of the war had shaken the very foundations of the world order, and there was a growing consensus among world leaders that the mistakes of the post-World War I era, including the failure of the League of Nations, should not be repeated. A new international framework was desperately needed to prevent the recurrence of such catastrophic conflicts. President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill, recognizing the gravity of the situation, met aboard the U.S. Augusta in Placentia Bay, Newfoundland, from August 9 to 12, 1941. This meeting would later become known as the Atlantic Conference, and it was a landmark moment in the history of international diplomacy. The key outcome of this conference was the issuance of the Atlantic Charter, a joint declaration of principles that would lay the groundwork for the post-war world. The Charter embodied a set of ideals that reflected not only the immediate objectives of the Allied powers in their struggle against the Axis forces, but also a broader vision for a more just and peaceful world order. At the heart of the Atlantic Charter were several fundamental principles. First and foremost was the principle of self-determination, which affirmed the right of all peoples to choose their form of government and have a say in their own destiny. This principle was a direct response to the imperial ambitions of the Axis powers and signaled a commitment to dismantling colonial empires and promoting independence. Equally significant was the commitment to renounce territorial aggrandizement. The Charter made it clear that the United States and the United Kingdom had no intentions of seeking territorial gains at the expense of other nations. This commitment to territorial integrity and the rejection of territorial expansionism were vital in reassuring other nations of the Allies' intentions. Another crucial aspect of the Atlantic Charter was the pledge to promote economic cooperation and social advancement. The Charter recognized that economic stability and the well-being of nations were intricately linked to global peace and prosperity. It called for the removal of trade barriers and the pursuit of economic advancement for all nations. Furthermore, the Charter emphasized the importance of disarmament and the pursuit of a world free from the fear of aggression. This commitment to collective security and the prevention of future wars laid the groundwork for the establishment of a new international organization. The Atlantic Charter, while born out of the exigencies of war, was imbued with a visionary spirit that extended beyond the immediate conflict. It articulated a vision of a post-war world order based on principles of justice, self-determination, cooperation, and the rejection of aggression. It laid the philosophical and moral foundations for the United Nations, which would soon become a reality, and it served as a beacon of hope during one of the darkest periods in human history. The Dumbarton Oaks Conference The year was 1944, and the world was still engulfed in the flames of World War I. As the war raged on multiple fronts, the need for a new international organization to ensure lasting peace and cooperation among nations became increasingly apparent. It was against this backdrop of global conflict that representatives from four of the world's major allied powers, the United States, the United Kingdom, the Soviet Union, and China, convened at the historic Dumbarton Oaks Estate in Washington, D.C. This gathering marked the beginning of a monumental endeavor, the drafting of a charter for a new international organization that would later become the United Nations. The Dumbarton Oaks Conference, which took place from August 21 to October 7, 1944, was a critical juncture in the quest for a more peaceful and just world order. The conference was held in a stately mansion surrounded by lush gardens, providing a serene backdrop for the intense diplomatic negotiations that would unfold within its walls. At the heart of the Dumbarton Oaks Conference was the daunting task of crafting a charter that would not only establish the structure and functions of the new international organization, but also address key issues that would shape the future of global governance. One of the most pressing matters discussed at Dumbarton Oaks was the structure of the proposed international organization. Delegates grappled with questions of how the organization would be organized, how decisions would be made, and how power would be distributed among member states. 
These discussions led to the establishment of the main bodies of the United Nations, the General Assembly, where all member states would have a voice, and the Security Council, responsible for maintaining international peace and security. The role of the Security Council was a particularly contentious issue. It was crucial to strike a balance between the great powers and smaller nations to ensure that the Security Council could effectively fulfill its mandate while avoiding the pitfalls of excessive power concentration. The compromise that emerged was the inclusion of five permanent members, the United States, the United Kingdom, the Soviet Union, China, and France, with veto power. This arrangement aimed to prevent unilateral actions by any one nation while maintaining the authority of the major allied powers. The Dumbarton Oaks Conference also addressed questions of sovereignty and the rights of member states. It was essential to preserve the sovereignty of nations while granting the international organization the authority to intervene in matters that threatened international peace. This delicate balance would be enshrined in the United Nations Charter. Throughout the arduous weeks of negotiations at Dumbarton Oaks, diplomats and representatives worked tirelessly to find common ground. They were acutely aware of the historic significance of their task and the immense responsibility they bore in shaping the future of the post-war world. The result of their efforts was a series of proposals and drafts that would form the basis for the United Nations Charter. While many details remain to be ironed out, the conference at Dumbarton Oaks laid the essential groundwork for the establishment of the United Nations. The San Francisco Conference As the year 1945 dawned, the world was still engulfed in the chaos and devastation of World War II. Yet, amidst the ruins of war, the dream of a new world order, one built upon the principles of peace, cooperation, and justice, was rapidly taking shape. The Dumbarton Oaks Conference, held the previous year, had laid the essential groundwork for the creation of a new international organization, but it was the San Francisco Conference, convened in the vibrant city of San Francisco, California, that would bring this dream to fruition. The San Francisco Conference, also known as the United Nations Conference on International Organization, was a historic gathering that spanned from April 25 to June 26, 1945. It brought together representatives from a staggering 50 nations, each with its own unique perspective and interests. The delegates gathered at the War Memorial and Performing Arts Center, a fitting location given the world's recent struggles and the hope that this conference would chart a course toward a more peaceful future. The primary objective of the San Francisco Conference was to finalize the United Nations Charter the document that would serve as the foundational framework for the new international organization. This monumental task was not without its challenges, as the delegates were tasked with reconciling diverse views and interests to create a charter that could effectively prevent future global conflicts and promote cooperation. The negotiations at the San Francisco Conference were characterized by intense debates and compromises on critical issues. One of the most significant challenges was the composition and powers of the Security Council. The delicate balance between the great powers and smaller nations, as established at Dumbarton Oaks, was a topic of heated discussion. Ultimately, the compromise was reached, leading to the establishment of five permanent members with veto power and a rotating membership for other nations. Another contentious issue was the inclusion of a commitment to human rights in the Charter. Delegates debated the extent to which the United Nations should be involved in safeguarding and promoting human rights. The outcome was a compromise that included a commitment to human rights without specifying detailed mechanisms, paving the way for the subsequent development of international human rights law. The San Francisco Conference also addressed the issue of trusteeship, particularly regarding former colonies and territories. Delegates grappled with the question of how to ensure the decolonization and self-determination of these regions while maintaining international supervision to prevent exploitation. The resulting compromise outlined a trusteeship system that aimed to balance the interests of both colonial powers and the territories in question. The conference was not without its moments of drama and tension. Delegates passionately advocated for their nation's interests and the negotiations often went late into the night. 
However, a spirit of cooperation and a shared commitment to preventing the horrors of war from recurring ultimately prevailed. On June 26, 1945, the San Francisco Conference reached its climax as representatives from 50 nations gathered to sign the United Nations Charter. This historic moment marked the birth of the United Nations, an organization dedicated to the lofty ideals of peace, cooperation, and the protection of human rights. The United Nations Charter was a testament to the collective will of nations to learn from the mistakes of the past and forge a path toward a better future. It embodied the shared hope that diplomacy, dialogue, and international cooperation could prevent the world from descending into the horrors of war once more. The United Nations Charter With the ink still fresh on the historic document signed in San Francisco in 1945, the world embarked on a new journey towards the realization of a vision that had been forged in the crucible of global conflict, the United Nations. The United Nations Charter, the foundational document of this ambitious international organization, stood as a beacon of hope and a promise of a better future in a world scarred by the horrors of two devastating world wars. The United Nations Charter was a groundbreaking and comprehensive document that established the very essence of the organization. It laid down not only the structure, but also the guiding principles that would shape the actions and aspirations of the United Nations for generations to come. At its core, the Charter proclaimed the principle of sovereign equality of all member states. This principle, which remains central to the United Nations to this day, underscored that, regardless of their size, wealth, or power, all nations would be treated as equals in the international arena. It was a bold departure from the hierarchical world order of the past and a testament to the commitment to fairness and justice. Peace. The ultimate goal of the United Nations was enshrined as a core principle in the Charter. It mandated the peaceful settlement of disputes and explicitly prohibited the use of force, except in self-defense or when authorized by the United Nations Security Council. This marked a profound shift from the previous era, where might often made right, to an era where diplomacy and international law would be the preferred means of resolving conflicts. The Charter also recognized the fundamental importance of human rights. While it did not contain a comprehensive Bill of Rights, it did express a commitment to promoting and encouraging respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. This commitment would lay the groundwork for the subsequent development of international human rights law and the establishment of organizations like the United Nations Human Rights Council. One of the most distinctive features of the United Nations Charter was the creation of the United Nations Security Council. This body was entrusted with the primary responsibility for maintaining international peace and security. The Security Council consisted of five permanent members, the United States, the United Kingdom, the Soviet Union, China, and France, with each possessing a veto power. This arrangement was intended to ensure that no single nation could unilaterally decide on matters of war and peace while also granting significant influence to the major allied powers. The United Nations Charter also established the General Assembly, where all member states would be represented. It provided a forum for nations to voice their concerns, deliberate on international issues, and make recommendations. The principle of one nation, one vote underscored the democratic nature of the General Assembly. The Charter was a visionary document, a product of the collective wisdom of nations that had endured the horrors of war and aspired to a future marked by peace, cooperation, and the protection of human dignity. It was, in essence, a blueprint for a new world order, one that rejected the law of the jungle in favor of the rule of law and diplomacy. The signing of the United Nations Charter in 1945 marked a profound turning point in human history. It was a moment when the international community, scared by the atrocities of war, came together to declare its commitment to building a better world. It was a moment that reflected the shared hope that through cooperation and the rule of law, humanity could chart a course toward a future where peace and justice would prevail. The Birth of the United Nations On October 24, 1945, a date etched into the annals of history, 
The world witnessed the birth of an ambitious and unprecedented endeavor, the United Nations. It was a momentous occasion, marking the culmination of years of planning, negotiation, and collective determination to forge a new path in a world still reeling from the ravages of World War I. This chapter delves into the historic events that surrounded the official establishment of the United Nations, a moment that would reshape the landscape of international diplomacy and cooperation. The birth of the United Nations was not a sudden occurrence, but the result of meticulous planning and widespread global consensus. The United Nations Charter, painstakingly drafted during the Dumbarton Oaks Conference and finalized at the San Francisco Conference in 1945, laid the groundwork for this transformative institution. It embodied the hopes and dreams of nations that had long suffered the devastating consequences of two world wars. With the charter in hand, representatives from a multitude of nations gathered in San Francisco to put pen to paper and officially endorse this groundbreaking document. The San Francisco Conference, which spanned from April 25 to June 26, 1945, was a testament to the power of diplomacy and cooperation. Delegates from 50 nations, each representing their unique interests and backgrounds, came together in the spirit of unity and purpose. They were driven by a shared commitment to building a world where peace, justice, and collaboration would reign supreme. One of the most remarkable features of the United Nations was its inclusivity. Unlike its predecessor, the League of Nations, which had been mared by the absence of key global players, the United Nations boasted widespread membership from the outset. This broad representation was a testament to the organization's commitment to sovereign equality, ensuring that both major powers and smaller nations had a seat at the table. The United Nations Charter had prescribed that for the organization to officially come into existence, it required ratification by a minimum number of member states. This threshold was met on October 24, 1945, a date that would forever be known as United Nations Day. It was a moment of jubilation and optimism as the required number of nations had embraced the Charter, signaling their commitment to the principles of the United Nations. The choice of New York City as the headquarters of the United Nations was symbolic. The city's international character and its status as a melting pot of cultures and ideas made it a fitting home for an organization dedicated to fostering global cooperation. The iconic United Nations headquarters, with its distinctive architectural design, would become a symbol of hope and diplomacy in the heart of the city. On the same day the Charter was ratified, the United Nations General Assembly convened for the first time. This inaugural session marked the beginning of a tradition of dialogue and diplomacy that continues to this day. The General Assembly provided a platform for nations to voice their concerns, articulate their visions for the future, and engage in spirited debates on issues of global importance. The birth of the United Nations was met with a sense of immense responsibility. The world had witnessed the devastating consequences of unchecked aggression and the failure of the League of Nations to prevent a second global conflict. The United Nations was seen as a beacon of hope, a means to prevent future cataclysms and to create a world where diplomacy, cooperation, and the rule of law would take precedence over the horrors of war. In essence, the birth of the United Nations was a testament to the resilience of humanity in the face of adversity. It was a manifestation of the shared belief that even in the aftermath of unprecedented global turmoil, nations could come together and chart a new course, one defined by the pursuit of peace, justice, and the betterment of humanity. Early Challenges and Successes The post-World War I landscape was one of profound transformation and uncertainty, and the newly born United Nations faced a daunting array of challenges as it embarked on its mission to foster international cooperation, maintain peace, and promote the well-being of all nations. Chapter 7 of the United Nations History delves into this pivotal period, when the organization was tested by the trials of a changing world, marked by the onset of the Cold War and conflicts in various regions. The conclusion of World War II had not ushered in the era of unbridled optimism that many had hoped for. Instead, the world found itself in the shadow of a new global struggle, 
The Cold War, pitting the United States and its Western allies against the Soviet Union and its Eastern Bloc. This ideological and geopolitical standoff would define the international landscape for decades to come and presented an immediate challenge for the United Nations. One of the earliest manifestations of the Cold War within the United Nations was the inability to reach a consensus on critical issues due to the veto power held by the permanent members of the Security Council. This deadlock hindered the organization's ability to take decisive action on matters of global significance. Nonetheless, the United Nations continued to function as a forum for dialogue and diplomacy, providing a platform for nations to air their grievances and engage in negotiations even during the most tense moments of the Cold War. Amidst the challenges posed by the Cold War, the United Nations also grappled with conflicts in various regions, many of which were the legacy of decolonization and struggles for independence. The Korean War, 1950-1953, marked one of the earliest tests of the United Nations' commitment to collective security. In response to North Korea's invasion of South Korea, the United Nations authorized the use of force to repel the aggression, marking the first major military action undertaken by the organization. The conflict demonstrated the complexities of managing international crises and underscored the need for diplomacy in resolving conflicts. The establishment of the State of Israel in 1948 was another significant milestone in the early years of the United Nations. The organization played a pivotal role in shaping the outcome of this historic event. The United Nations General Assembly passed Resolution 181, which called for the partition of Palestine into separate Jewish and Arab states, with Jerusalem placed under international administration. While the resolution did not bring an end to the conflicts in the region, it set the stage for the creation of Israel and the subsequent geopolitical dynamics of the Middle East. Despite the challenges and geopolitical rivalries of the era, the United Nations also achieved notable successes in its early years. One such achievement was the process of decolonization. The United Nations played a crucial role in assisting newly independent nations and overseeing the transition from colonial rule to self-determination. This process saw the emergence of numerous new member states as the world map was redrawn. In 1946, the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF, was established. This agency was dedicated to providing humanitarian aid and long-term development assistance to children and mothers in countries affected by the aftermath of World War I. UNICEF's work has since expanded to become one of the leading organizations working to improve the lives of children worldwide. Evolving Roles and Global Impact the evolution of the United Nations into a multifaceted global institution, adept at addressing a diverse array of global challenges, stands as a testament to its enduring relevance and adaptability. Chapter 8 of the United Nations History explores the organization's journey through the decades as it transitioned from its early years, marked by post-war reconstruction and the onset of the Cold War, to becoming a vital forum for international diplomacy, cooperation, and problem-solving. As the world progressed beyond the immediate post-World War I era, new and complex global challenges began to emerge. The United Nations, with its commitment to fostering international cooperation and addressing the world's most pressing issues, expanded its role and mandate to respond to these evolving challenges. One of the most significant shifts in the United Nations' focus was its increasing engagement with environmental issues. In the 1960s and 1970s, as concerns about environmental degradation and resource depletion grew, the United Nations responded by establishing the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, in 1972. UNEP played a pivotal role in raising awareness about environmental challenges, promoting sustainable development practices, and facilitating international agreements on issues like climate change and biodiversity conservation. Peacekeeping operations also became a defining feature of the United Nations' work. These operations were initiated to help maintain peace and stability in regions experiencing conflicts or post-conflict transitions. 
Notable examples include the deployment of United Nations peacekeepers in the Sinai Peninsula after the 1956 Suez Crisis and in Cyprus following the 1974 Turkish invasion. Over the years, United Nations peacekeeping missions have been deployed to numerous conflict zones around the world, often under challenging conditions, with the aim of preventing violence and fostering reconciliation. The United Nations continued to champion development as a core component of its mission. In 1960, it established the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, to provide assistance to countries in their efforts to improve living standards, reduce poverty, and achieve sustainable development. The organization's commitment to development culminated in the adoption of the Millennium Development Goals, MDGs, in 2000, a set of eight ambitious targets aimed at addressing poverty, education, gender equality, and other critical issues. The MDGs guided international development efforts for 15 years, leading to significant progress in many areas. However, recognizing the need for a more comprehensive and inclusive development agenda, the United Nations replaced the MDGs with the Sustainable Development Goals (SDGs) in 2015. The SDGs expanded the scope of international development to encompass a broader range of issues, including environmental sustainability, gender equality, and social inclusion. These 17 interconnected goals set a transformative agenda for the world to achieve by 2030, underlining the United Nations' commitment to addressing the root causes of global challenges. In addition to these developments, the United Nations has expanded its membership, welcoming new nations into the international community. Its agencies and specialized bodies have multiplied, focusing on specific areas such as health, World Health Organization, Labor, International Labor Organization, and Telecommunications, International Telecommunication Union, among others. The United Nations' impact on global affairs cannot be overstated. It has served as a platform for international diplomacy, facilitating dialogue and negotiations on a wide range of issues, from disarmament to human rights. Its humanitarian agencies have provided life-saving assistance to millions of people in times of crisis, while its peacekeeping missions have helped prevent and resolve conflicts in regions torn by violence. The United Nations Today The United Nations, having traversed nearly eight decades of history, stands today as a multifaceted global institution confronting an intricate web of challenges that span from environmental crises to humanitarian emergencies. This chapter encapsulates the contemporary role of the United Nations, showcasing its resilience, adaptability, and enduring significance as a symbol of hope for global cooperation and a platform for nations to collaborate in the pursuit of peace, security, and sustainable development. In the present day, the United Nations finds itself at the forefront of the battle against one of the most pressing global challenges, climate change. The stark reality of a warming planet, with its catastrophic implications for ecosystems, economies, and societies, has spurred the United Nations to take a leading role in mobilizing international action. Initiatives such as the Paris Agreement adopted in 2015 have provided a framework for countries to collectively address climate change by reducing greenhouse gas emissions, adapting to its effects, and fostering international climate finance. Humanitarian crises, both natural and man-made, continue to test the United Nations' capacity for swift and effective response. The organization's humanitarian agencies, including the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, and the World Food Program, WFP, are on the front lines, providing life-saving assistance to millions affected by conflicts, natural disasters, and other emergencies. The United Nations remains committed to upholding the principles of humanitarianism, including the protection of civilians and the provision of essential aid to those in need. Peace and security remain central to the United Nations mission, and the organization continues to engage in peacekeeping operations across the globe. From the Democratic Republic of Congo to South Sudan, United Nations peacekeepers are working tirelessly to prevent violence, protect civilians, and facilitate political solutions to conflicts. 
These operations are conducted under challenging conditions, often in regions characterized by instability and insecurity. The United Nations also plays a pivotal role in promoting human rights and advocating for the protection of fundamental freedoms. The United Nations Human Rights Council, established in 2006, is the preeminent global body dedicated to addressing human rights issues. It conducts investigations, monitors human rights abuses, and provides a platform for nations to engage in dialogue on human rights-related matters. The organization's commitment to sustainable development remains unwavering. The Sustainable Development Goals DGs, adopted in 2015, are a blueprint for addressing global challenges, from poverty and inequality to environmental degradation. The United Nations has positioned itself as a key driver of the SDGs, supporting countries in their efforts to achieve these ambitious targets by 2030. In the realm of public health, the United Nations has played a crucial role in addressing pandemics and other health crises. The World Health Organization, OGO, a specialized agency of the United Nations, has been at the forefront of global efforts to combat diseases such as HIV AIDS, Ebola, and most recently, the COVID-19 pandemic. The United Nations has advocated for equitable access to vaccines and treatments and promoted international cooperation in managing health emergencies. The United Nations' role as a symbol of hope for global cooperation cannot be overstated. It serves as a forum for nations to engage in diplomacy, negotiate agreements, and address shared challenges. Its General Assembly provides a platform for all member states, regardless of size or power, to voice their concerns and participate in the shaping of international norms and policies. More information and facts, key figures in the formation and early years of the United Nations. As we delve into the history of the United Nations, it is impossible to ignore the profound influence of key individuals who shaped its formation and early years. These visionary leaders played pivotal roles in crafting the organization's ideals, structure, and mission. In this chapter, we pay tribute to some of the most prominent figures whose dedication to peace, diplomacy, and global cooperation laid the foundation for the United Nations as we know it today. Franklin D. Roosevelt, often referred to as the driving force behind the United Nations, President Franklin D. Roosevelt of the United States was instrumental in shaping the organization's early vision. His leadership during World War II and his commitment to a post-war world order based on collective security and international cooperation were pivotal. Roosevelt played a key role in the planning of the United Nations during the Wartham Conferences at Casablanca, Tehran, Dumbarton Oaks, and Yalta. Tragically, he did not live to see the United Nations come to fruition as he passed away in April 1945, just months before the San Francisco Conference. Winston Churchill British Prime Minister Winston Churchill was a steadfast ally of Roosevelt in the endeavor to establish a post-war international organization. Churchill and Roosevelt jointly drafted the Atlantic Charter in 1941, which outlined key principles such as self-determination and international cooperation. Churchill's commitment to the United Nations remained strong, even as the complexities of the post-war world order emerged. Trig Fulai, the first Secretary General of the United Nations, Trig Fulai of Norway, was a crucial figure in the organization's early years. He was selected for this role by the United Nations General Assembly in 1946. Lai faced numerous challenges during his tenure, including managing the early years of the Cold War and the organization's role in the Korean War. His leadership helped establish many of the United Nations' foundational practices and procedures. Dag Hammarskjöld Dag Hammarskjöld, a Swedish diplomat, served as the second Secretary General of the United Nations from 1953 until his tragic death in a plane crash in 1961. Hammarskjöld is remembered for his unwavering commitment to peacekeeping and conflict resolution. His tenure saw the expansion of United Nations peacekeeping missions to address complex conflicts around the world. 
His legacy endures as a symbol of the Secretary General's role as a tireless advocate for peace and diplomacy. Eleanor Roosevelt Renowned for her role as the First Lady of the United States, Eleanor Roosevelt also made significant contributions to the United Nations. She served as the chair of the United Nations Commission on Human Rights and played a pivotal role in drafting the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in 1948. Her dedication to human rights advocacy left an indelible mark on the United Nations mission. Vyacheslav Molotov As the Soviet Union's Minister of Foreign Affairs during and after World War II, Vyacheslav Molotov played a central role in the negotiations that led to the establishment of the United Nations. His participation in key wartime conferences, including the Yalta Conference, helped shape the post-war international landscape. However, Molotov's role also reflected the early tensions of the emerging Cold War. John D. Rockefeller Jr. While not a political leader, John D. Rockefeller Jr. played a significant role in the establishment of the United Nations. He provided crucial financial support for the acquisition of land in New York City where the United Nations headquarters was built, solidifying the organization's presence in the United States. These key figures, among others, left an indelible mark on the United Nations, shaping its early years and imbuing it with the values of peace, cooperation, and diplomacy. Their leadership and dedication to the cause of international collaboration laid the groundwork for an organization that would go on to play a central role in addressing the complex challenges of the modern world. Their legacies continue to inspire the work of the United Nations as it strives to fulfill its mission of promoting peace, security, and sustainable development on a global scale. Cold War Tensions and the United Nations the Cold War, a period of ideological, political, and military rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union and their respective allies, had a profound impact on the United Nations. This chapter delves into the intricate web of Cold War tensions and explores how the East-West divide influenced and sometimes hindered UN actions during this turbulent era. Origins of Cold War Tensions the seeds of the Cold War were sown even before World War II ended. Differing ideologies, with the United States championing democracy and capitalism, while the Soviet Union embraced communism, created an inherent tension. As the victorious Allied powers, the United States and the Soviet Union emerged as the world's superpowers, each vying for influence and dominance in the post-war world. The establishment of the United Nations Despite their ideological differences, the United States and the Soviet Union found common ground in their desire to establish a new international organization to prevent a recurrence of global conflicts. The United Nations was born out of this shared interest. However, as the war concluded and the organization took shape, Cold War tensions began to permeate its proceedings. The Security Council and the Veto Power one of the most notable impacts of the Cold War on the United Nations was the structure of the Security Council. The Security Council, with its five permanent members, the United States, the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, China, and France, each wielding a veto power, was designed to ensure that no one nation could unilaterally dictate international affairs. However, this structure also became a source of division as the veto power allowed the superpowers to block resolutions that ran contrary to their interests. The Korean War, 1950-1953 Perhaps the most significant example of Cold War tensions influencing UN actions was the Korean War. When North Korea invaded South Korea in 1950, the United Nations Security Council swiftly passed a resolution authorizing a UN-led military intervention to repel the aggression. This marked the first major military action taken under the UN banner. The Soviet Union, however, was boycotting the Security Council at the time in protest of the UN's refusal to recognize the People's Republic of China as the legitimate government of China. The absence of the Soviet Union allowed the resolution to pass. The Korean War served as an early indicator of how the United Nations could be drawn into Cold War conflicts. 
The Cuban Missile Crisis, 1962. The Cuban Missile Crisis, often considered the closest the world came to nuclear war during the Cold War, showcased the United Nations as a diplomatic forum for crisis resolution. The United States and the Soviet Union engaged in tense negotiations at the United Nations to find a peaceful resolution to the crisis. UN Secretary General Yu Thet played a crucial role in facilitating communication between the superpowers. Ultimately, diplomacy prevailed, averting a catastrophic conflict. Divisions in the General Assembly The General Assembly, where all UN member states had a voice, often became a stage for Cold War rivalries. Debates on issues like decolonization, human rights, and disarmament were marked by ideological clashes between the superpowers and their respective blocs of allies. The Soviet Union and the United States frequently used their influence to sway votes in the General Assembly, leading to divisive outcomes, detent and cooperation. Despite the tensions, there were moments of cooperation between the superpowers within the United Nations. Efforts to control the spread of nuclear weapons, such as the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty NPT, demonstrated a willingness to address shared concerns. Conclusion The Cold War profoundly shaped the United Nations, influencing its structure, decision-making processes, and actions. It showcased the delicate balance between unity and division within the organization, with the East-West divide often obstructing consensus. Yet, it also highlighted the United Nations' potential as a platform for diplomacy and crisis resolution, preventing catastrophic conflicts. The Cold War era serves as a pivotal chapter in the history of the United Nations, reflecting the challenges and opportunities of a world divided by ideology and power rivalry. United Nations Peacekeeping Missions – Promoting Peace in a Complex World the concept of United Nations peacekeeping missions represents a noble endeavor to preserve peace and stability in a world often mirrored by conflict and discord. This chapter offers a comprehensive exploration of UN peacekeeping missions, drawing from notable examples in the Balkans, Rwanda, Mali, South Sudan, and beyond. It delves into the challenges faced by peacekeepers and the enduring impact of these missions on conflict resolution and global peace. Origins of UN Peacekeeping The United Nations was founded on the principles of collective security and the prevention of armed conflicts. In 1948, the first UN peacekeeping mission, the United Nations Truce Supervision Organization, UNTSO, was established to monitor the armistice between Israel and its neighbors. This marked the inception of a distinctive approach to maintaining international peace. The Balkans UNPROFOR and beyond. The Balkans, torn apart by ethnic and nationalist conflicts in the 1990s, became one of the most prominent arenas for UN peacekeeping efforts. The United Nations Protection Force, UNPROFOR, was deployed to Croatia, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, and later to the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. The challenges were immense, from navigating complex interethnic tensions to providing humanitarian assistance in a war-torn region. UNPRFOR's presence paved the way for subsequent missions, such as the United Nations mission in Bosnia and Herzegovina, UNMIBH, and the United Nations mission in Kosovo, UNIK, which played crucial roles in stabilizing the region. Rwanda, the lessons of tragedy. The Rwandan genocide in 1994 remains a haunting chapter in human history. The United Nations Assistance Mission for Rwanda UNAIR, faced immense challenges in the midst of the genocide, including a lack of resources and a mandate that prevented direct intervention. The tragic events in Rwanda prompted a revaluation of UN peacekeeping, leading to the development of the concept of responsibility to protect. R2P, which emphasizes the international community's duty to prevent mass atrocities. Mali, combating terrorism and instability. In the early 21st century, Mali became a focal point of UN peacekeeping efforts. The United Nations Multidimensional Integrated Stabilization Mission in Mali, MINUSSNA, 
was established to address the complex security situation and counter the threat posed by extremist groups. Nine USMA's mandate includes supporting political processes, protecting civilians, and helping to restore state authority. The mission grapples with challenges such as asymmetric warfare, attacks on peacekeepers, and the need to facilitate political dialogue among disparate factions. South Sudan, a struggle for independence and stability. South Sudan, the world's youngest nation, has experienced a tumultuous journey since gaining independence in 2011. The United Nations Mission in South Sudan, UNISS, was established to support the country's transition to stability. UNISS faces challenges related to ethnic conflicts, internal displacement, and protection of civilians. Its efforts encompass not only traditional peacekeeping, but also humanitarian assistance and conflict resolution. Impact on Conflict Resolution United Nations peacekeeping missions have made significant contributions to conflict resolution. They have helped create conditions conducive to diplomacy, provided safe havens for civilians, and supported the implementation of peace agreements. However, they have also faced criticism and challenges, such as limited resources, mandates that may not align with the complexities on the ground, and difficulties in achieving political solutions. Conclusion United Nations peacekeeping missions represent a critical aspect of the organization's work, embodying its commitment to global peace and security. While challenges abound, these missions have, in many instances, made invaluable contributions to conflict resolution and the protection of vulnerable populations. They stand as a testament to the international community's collective effort to uphold the principles of peace and cooperation, even in the face of the world's most complex and enduring conflicts. The history of UN peacekeeping is a story of hope and resilience, exemplifying humanity's quest for a more peaceful and just world. United Nations Addressing Modern Challenges A Multifaceted Approach in an ever-evolving world, the United Nations remains at the forefront of tackling contemporary global challenges. This chapter embarks on a journey through the organization's efforts to grapple with some of the most pressing issues of our time, including cybersecurity, migration, and the implications of emerging technologies. It illuminates the United Nations' multifaceted approach to these complex challenges and its unwavering commitment to promoting a more secure and equitable world. Cybersecurity Defending the Digital Realm In the digital age, the realm of warfare and conflict has expanded into cyberspace. The United Nations has recognized the critical importance of cybersecurity in maintaining international peace and security. Through various bodies, including the United Nations Group of Governmental Experts, GGE, on developments in the field of information and telecommunications in the context of international security, the organization has engaged in dialogue and diplomacy to establish norms and rules for responsible state behavior in cyberspace. The aim is to reduce the risk of cyber attacks, protect critical infrastructure, and promote global cyber stability. Migration Managing Human Mobility Migration Driven by factors such as conflict, climate change, and economic disparity, has emerged as a defining issue of our era. The United Nations has taken a comprehensive approach to address the challenges and opportunities presented by human mobility. The Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration, adopted in 2018, serves as a landmark agreement that outlines a cooperative framework for managing migration at the global level. The United Nations agencies, including the International Organization for Migration IOM, and the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees UNHCR, work tirelessly to provide humanitarian assistance to migrants and refugees and support countries in managing migration flows. Emerging Technologies Navigating the Frontier The rapid advancement of emerging technologies, such as artificial intelligence, AI, biotechnology, and autonomous weapon systems poses both great promise and profound challenges. 
The United Nations acknowledges the need to harness the potential of these technologies while mitigating their risks. The Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons CCDAR, addresses emerging technologies in the realm of armed conflict, including discussions on lethal autonomous weapon systems. Additionally, the United Nations remains engaged in debates surrounding AI ethics, data privacy, and the implications of these technologies on human rights and security. Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, A Holistic Vision While addressing these modern challenges, the United Nations remains steadfast in its commitment to the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs. The 17 SDGs, adopted in 2015, provide a comprehensive framework for global development, encompassing issues such as poverty, inequality, climate change, and access to education and healthcare. The United Nations, through its agencies like the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, plays a pivotal role in supporting countries' efforts to achieve these goals by 2030. Global Health, Pandemic Preparedness and Response The COVID-19 pandemic served as a stark reminder of the critical importance of global health security. The World Health Organization, ODO, a specialized agency of the United Nations, has been at the forefront of international efforts to combat the pandemic, providing guidance, coordinating research, and advocating for equitable access to vaccines and treatments. The United Nations is also working to strengthen global health preparedness to ensure a swift response to future health crises. Climate change, a defining challenge, Climate change remains one of the most urgent global challenges. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, serves as the primary forum for international climate negotiations, including the Paris Agreement. The United Nations has facilitated global efforts to limit global warming, promote renewable energy, and support climate adaptation and resilience in vulnerable communities. Conclusion the United Nations' commitment to addressing modern challenges is rooted in its enduring mission to promote peace, security, and sustainable development. In an interconnected world, where borders are increasingly porous and technology reshapes the very fabric of society, the organization continues to adapt and evolve. Through diplomacy, dialogue, humanitarian assistance, and global partnerships, the United Nations endeavors to forge a path towards a more equitable, secure, and sustainable future. In doing so, it embodies humanity's collective aspiration for a world where the most pressing challenges are met with global cooperation and resolve. The Vital Role of Civil Society, NGOs, and the United Nations Within the expansive realm of international diplomacy and governance, non-governmental organizations, NGOs, and civil society groups constitute a vital and dynamic force. This chapter embarks on a journey to recognize and celebrate the profound contributions of these entities in supporting, and at times, pressuring the United Nations to take action on specific issues. It is a testament to the power of civil society in shaping the global agenda and advancing the values of peace, justice, and human rights. Civil society, and the United Nations, a symbiotic relationship. The United Nations, founded on the principle of multilateralism, has always recognized the intrinsic value of engaging with civil society. From its inception, civil society organizations have played an active role in advocating for global issues and influencing the policies and decisions of the United Nations. This collaboration is emblematic of the organization's commitment to inclusivity and the belief that meaningful change requires collective effort. NGOs, the unsung heroes, non-governmental organizations, NGOs, are the unsung heroes of global governance. These entities, ranging from grassroots organizations to international giants, dedicate themselves to addressing a myriad of issues from human rights to climate change to healthcare. NGOs provide essential services, conduct research, and amplify the voices of marginalized communities. They serve as the conscience of international society, holding governments and international bodies accountable for their actions. The Road to Recognition 
NGO consultative status. One of the pivotal moments in the relationship between NGOs and the United Nations is the granting of consultative status to select organizations. Consultative status allows NGOs to participate in United Nations meetings, conferences, and special events. There are three categories of consultative status, general, special, and roster. NGOs with consultative status can submit written and oral statements, organize side events, and engage with member states and UN agencies. Advocating for human rights. NGOs have been at the forefront of advocating for human rights on the global stage. These organizations have played a crucial role in the drafting of international human rights treaties and have provided invaluable documentation of human rights abuses worldwide. The Annual Commission on Human Rights and its successor, the Human Rights Council, regularly engage with NGOs to assess the state of human rights globally and hold perpetrators accountable. The Environment and Climate Action Environmental NGOs have been instrumental in raising awareness about climate change and advocating for sustainable practices. They have worked alongside the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, to advance environmental conservation and promote global agreements such as the Paris Agreement. Youth-led movements like Fridays for Future, inspired by Swedish activist Greta Thunberg, have gained international prominence pressuring governments to take bolder action against climate change. Health and humanitarian assistance. NGOs operating in the healthcare and humanitarian sectors provide critical services during crisis. Organizations like Medicines Stands Frontiers, Doctors Without Borders, and the International Committee of the Red Cross, by CRC, have saved countless lives in conflict zones and disaster-stricken regions. Their presence and advocacy are essential in mobilizing resources and alleviating suffering. Gender equality and women's rights. The promotion of gender equality and women's rights has been a long-standing priority for both the United Nations and NGOs. Organizations like UN Women collaborate with civil society groups to advance women's rights, combat gender-based violence, and empower women economically and politically. Civil society played a pivotal role in the adoption of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action in 1995, a landmark document for gender equality. Conclusion The dynamic partnership between NGOs, civil society, and the United Nations embodies the essence of global cooperation and solidarity. Civil society organizations bring to light the voices and concerns of those who are often marginalized or excluded from traditional diplomatic circles. They inspire change, hold institutions accountable, and push for ambitious solutions to the world's most pressing problems. The United Nations recognizes that in this complex, interconnected world, the collaboration between states and civil society is indispensable for a brighter, more equitable future.